Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. Today is October the 22nd. I'm going to do your Just for Today in a Meditation. I'm brought to you by Hope Through Navigation, and this is our Hood Recovery Services. If you need to reach me, feel free to do so at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. Let's go ahead and get into our meditation. Okay, the title of it is Look Who's Talking. Our disease is so cunning that it can get us into impossible situations. Basic text, page 83. Some of us say, my disease is talking to me. Others say, my head won't turn off. Still others refer to the committee in my head or the monkey on my back. Let's face it. We suffer from an incurable malady that continues to affect us even in recovery. Our disease gives us warped information about what's going on in our lives. It tells us not to look at ourselves because what we'll see is too scary. Sometimes it tells us we're not responsible for ourselves and our actions. Other times, it tells us that everything wrong with the world is our fault. Our disease tricks us into trusting it. The NA program provides us with many voices that counter our addiction, voices we can trust. We can call our sponsor for a reality check. We can listen to the voice of an addict trying to get clean. The ultimate solution is to work the steps and draw on the strength of a higher power that will get us through those times when our disease is talking. Just for today, I will ignore the voice of my addiction. I will listen to the voice of my program and a power greater than myself. So we're talking about voices and to look who's talking look at who's talking look at which voice is talking to us not a voice as in schizophrenia no a voice as in thoughts where's the thought coming from where's that idea coming from can you pinpoint it do you know the difference? Do you know the difference of the voice from your addiction and the voice from your recovery? They should sound very differently. The voice from your disease of addiction should have a care less attitude. I've heard one uh, recovering person say, when I, I have the efforts right? The efforts, you know what that means, right? When I have that, I hear myself saying that one too many times, I know the disease of addiction is active. It's active. It's more active than the process of recovery, the, the healthiness of recovery. They're polar opposites. The disease of addiction can get you into a situation that is impossible for you to come out of clean, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and a lot of times physically. That's why the daily maintenance of living just for today and maintaining your process, your status of a recovering individual is important. Now, I was having a um, discussion with someone about reputations, and they wanted me to believe that they could care less what people think about them. And I told them, I don't know how you can do that. I care about what people think about me. My reputation is very important. 
I don't let what they think or say dictate what I do, but I do pay attention as to how I'm coming across to individuals and what they might think, because that gives me an idea about how I might be acting undetected to myself. When you're in denial and you're operating in the disease of addiction, when you are operating in self-will, you will find that you have a tendency, like I said, to have the efforts that I could care less, um, the, whether you're an attraction or not to others is not a major for you. Again, I'm not talking about trying to allow the thoughts of other people dictate what you do or do not do. I'm talking about paying attention to how you are impacting individuals. That's just part of, in my book, my understanding of living just for today. I try to live my day mindful of what I do and what I say and how I impact people. That's part of my life. I don't have that attitude or that that um, self-ego that, run right, that runs right. I don't have that where what I do and what I say and what's going on with me is the only thing that matters today. It should matter how you're impacting the people around you and how you're impacting the world around you, it should matter to you because this is a part of either your character defect or your development of your recovering character. So today, let's listen to what voice is talking to us. Let's pay attention. And one of the best ways to do that, again, I'm going to say it, is through prayer and meditation. During the meditation piece, you are able to observe without acting upon your thoughts, and they will be racing thoughts. But just as I was training one lady, I said, as the thoughts come to you, and you know you have a certain amount of time that you're trying to meditate and stay still and not let those racing thoughts control you. When they come to you and you observe them, just acknowledge them, good or bad. I see you, but I'm meditating right now. And you can just do it with a thought. You don't have to verbalize it. Or you can just say release. Like Brendan Buchard taught me. You can just say release, breathing in and breathing out. You want to start monitoring what those thoughts look like what they sound like. So you can begin to determine internally when you are talking in your disease of addiction voice, when your thoughts are talking in that voice compared to when they're talking in the voice of recovery and spirituality. I hope that happens. The voice of addiction it says here, I will ignore the voice of addiction and I will listen to the voice of my program and a power greater than myself. I would say that that's true, right? I would not, in the ignoring, not be aware of it. I want to be aware of which voice is doing the talking. Eventually you'll get it down pat where the voice of your program and your higher power is more regular. It can overwhelm easily the voice of addiction. It will become second nature for you to listen to the voice of recovery. But in the meantime, you need to be able to discern which voice is talking. And I've given you a clear indication of how you can do that. One will promote self-will and the other one will promote goodwill. And if you don't know the difference between those two, you should research it. Because when you're trying to identify which voice of a voice is speaking, you're going to need to know what characteristics come along with that voice. You should know them because you've lived it. 
But if you haven't really tried to focus on changing your thought process, you just allow it to do what it wants to do, you have authority over it. So you need to acknowledge it and understand how it works. Just like the voice of God, you, you need to understand that voice. But you can ignore the voice of addiction because you have a an experienced life with it enough to know that it only leads to a dead end time and time and time again. The road to the dead end may be longer, but you have traveled. It's a, a, a road that has been well-traveled by you. So we need to keep that honest and understand that every time that we're letting the voice of addiction take over, it's never led us to a peaceful place. And when you start to, to become comfortable with the voice of recovery and the voice of God or your higher power or a power greater than yourself that's positive and brings good energy to your life, when you become comfortable with that, you will easily be able to discern the two and choose which voice you're going to go with. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you and I will be talking to you shortly with the other meditation, but I'll be talking to you tomorrow. In the meantime, I want for you to wake up and have a beautiful day on purpose.